Right, hi everyone, uh, Nick Holland again. Um, this time I'm joined by Jono Coleman. Good morning, Jono. Morning, Nick. Um, for everyone's benefit, Jono is, um, well, obviously one of the drivers in the SO24 um, LMP2 Ligier, um, number 22, if you're looking for it on track. Um, Jono's had a, a whew, lifelong ambition, I think we uncovered at Silverstone, to um, partake in Le Mans, and uh, this week ahead um, looks for him to fulfil on that. So briefly, Jono, um, how has the ELMS been going for you this year? Uh, ELMS has been um, an interesting journey so far. Um, we, we started obviously the, uh, the test day at uh, Paul Ricard, which was the first first run for the team and for the car. Um, so it's obviously a, a uh, voyage of discovery there, and um, we um, went to Silverstone, you know, in um, you know looking forward to it, um, and then really the race. They went better than we could have hoped. Um, we just there was a, a somebody went off ahead of, of us or me at the start, which um, dropped us back down the field. But um, it, it you know I fought back through, and then the other boys kept us. Their um, nose is clean and a good pace, and we ended up with the third. So that was um, yeah, fantastic um, start to the year for us and for the team. Um, and then we went to Imola and I think, I would say our expectations, you know, as we were still, still had our feet on the ground that, you know, we, um, you know, the Silverstone race obviously went our way, but um, it, um, it was, um, you know, it's, Imola was, was, I think, uh, I'm not sure whether you'd call it a learning weekend, but it's, um, you know, it wasn't quite as as good as we had hoped, um, just for whatever reason, the car just didn't feel as, as good as it had, it still was an awful record, so um, we, we struggled really overall on, on pace through that weekend, which um, when we came home 11th, um, and um, you know, some, some of the, uh, the weather bits, um, you know, certainly made an interesting end for the race. Yeah, I mean, Imola was very changeable weather conditions, so I think, you know, you were probably in a situation of uh, chasing a setup for the best conditions at the time, and yeah, I think it was a, a fairly random race for everyone. Um, in terms of those changeable conditions, of course, Le Mans looks like it'll be potentially similar. Um, I mean, you're sixth in the championship now in ELMS, and uh, I think only half a point off of being in fifth place, so, you know... Things a uh, long way to go still in that championship. Just yeah, moving, yeah, yeah, moving forward on to um, uh, So Twenty Four at Le Mans. Uh, there's been a few changes in the team. I think um, one of the drivers, uh, I think Eric, has replaced Olivier. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, sadly, um, uh, there were some uh, funding issues which. Um, Sponsorship um, that I think had been hoped for hadn't materialised, and um, you know, the, as we know, the world works on money, sadly. And um, you know, we um, there was a, a hole that the team had to fill um, fairly quickly. And um, Eric, um, he's I think this is his thirteenth race, um, but his third Le Mans. Um, so um, you yeah, know, he's got experience of Le Mans already. Um, but it's, um, you know, he's a, a gentleman driver, um, but we, um, you know, sadly we were just in a position where we, you know, the, the real, real world um, economics hit in and we needed some money and um, Eric's was um, what was what was needed. So, um, you know, there's been a change swapping of the VA um, for Eric, um, which um, obviously Eric was with us at the test. Yeah, last week and um, you yeah, know lovely lovely guy and you yeah, know was looking to you know uh, enjoy um, the Le Mans event again which um, you know as I said it's his 
third time and um, he, you know, he's fallen in love with the event and um, is um, really glad to be back doing it again. Yeah, it certainly sounds like someone who's um, very much on the same page as yourself and, you know, we wish you all well. I mean, very difficult for him to get up to speed with the car, but, you know, there's plenty of hours, I guess, before, well, sorry, between now and the race um, for that to happen. Um, yeah, I mean, it, sorry, it, it's one of those things that, uh, one of the things I learned on the test day was that, you know, you've got a lot of time, but actually because of the laps so long and like them, but actually the physical time you get um, in terms of laps, you know, it soon, um, it soon takes by and, you know, I'm sure that Absolutely, and you know the joy of a, a twenty-four hour race is uh, it's not how you start; it's the way you finish. So, no, no, exactly. We've just got to go, and um, we, we know we're not going to win it on pace. Um, no, but we've you know we've, um, we've just got to keep our noses clean and you know fuel on tires and keep, keep going round. So um, that, that'll be um, um, what we'll be looking to do. Sure. Okay, so in terms of uh, test day, um, uh, at Sports Car Global we do a little bit of work with the data that we have access to. Um, saw some great times from you towards the end of the morning session. I think we saw averages of about a 352, which I think for more, more experienced um, uh, sportsmen, uh, drivers, uh, that is a, a, a good time. Uh, in the afternoon session, I think we saw Vincent Capillier doing uh, 45s. Um, so the Ligier clearly has the pace in it. What were your impressions of uh, Test Day? Uh, my impressions of the Test Day were, um, as I said earlier, you know, the, you, you, you sort of think where you've got a whole day, but you know, probably in total, I had, I don't know, 14 laps of the track, I would think, something like that, 15 laps. So, um, you know, it, it's, um, it's not a great deal to get to, used to a track where, you know, the, the average speed is obviously um, much higher than the, the sort of traditional tracks that we go to. Um, it, it's the sort of tracks you've got to chip away at. Um, learning because you know you make a mistake there and um, it, it will get expensive so um, um, the, the morning I was quite happy with um, there was a setup issue with the car um, which um, they'd found after my run so we stopped stopped early to rectify it and um, then in the afternoon I just went out and I was they'd, they'd adjusted the car and um, it, it was Certainly, some of the characteristics were better, but it had definitely got further than from the steering, and uh, I just you know, lost confidence in it, so I wasn't attacking the pedals properly. And um, you know, around um, around the line, you've got to be confident in, in what you're sacking, and um, we'll, um, you know, the boys have been working to, to understand it and get it, get it all uh, on track for the race, which, um, you know, I'm one of the things I'm going to for the race meeting and to go back up. Since I've come to our future, I've been left for breaking because the morning that I was driving previously um, dictated that I needed to. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go back to right foot breaking um, because um, the, the, um, the future of the data, it, it just looks like that will work better for me. So, um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that gets on this week. But um, it's, um, you yeah, know, the, the morning I was happy with it, the afternoon. Sure, 
in their cup practice and qualifying will be um, a bit better. But um, certainly looking at the the, the way the um, the test day shook out, you know, it certainly looks like the Orica 05 is, is the package to have around Le Mans. And, um, the, um, you know, for us, there'll certainly be some, some work to, to get the car up to speed. But, um, you know, the guys on the team are all really great guys, um, good experience. And um, I know we've got the people to do the job, so we, we're just going to get our head down and uh, work sensibly and, um, you know, chip away at it. Sure. Um, in conversation with um, Straka Racing, um, they see that tyre usage is going to be very key in the race. Um, there seems to be a question as to how long the Areca can go on, on its tyres, um, certainly in comparison with the Gibson. So it would be interesting to see where the Ligier um, fits into that, that picture. Um, we've seen a lot of the car um, on Twitter, in French media and so on. It, it appears to have done a tour of a lot of the local towns and so on, um, drumming up support, which is lovely to see. Um, a, a proper French local uh, La Sarthe effort. Um, what are your expectations for, for the coming uh, race week? Um, I think it's... Um be a, a really exciting event but as you touched on the, the cars being around a number of the local sort of villages and towns it's um yeah uh SA24 um South Objective 24 is, is what it stands for and it's, it's basically a, a group of local companies that all contribute to um to the car and um they've uh, it's for the hospitality um, that they run um, at the um, at the events and um, I think over the race week there's about they've got about fifteen hundred people actually coming to the to the meeting. Um, so I'm sure it's gonna be a you know a really uh, busy week for us with the track action as well. Um, but I think you know we've uh, you know we've got to be realistic about what we what we're going to do and um, you know, we've got a field of 21 LMP2s, and when you look through the, you know, the drivers, you know, they're all people that, you know, I massively respect, and, and you know, just to be a part of the race is, is, is brilliant, but, um, you know, the, the fact, obviously, we've got um, Eric, um, you know, Olivier is swapping a professional for a gentleman driver, you know, you, you're going to take some pace pay, and um, now, effectively, with two gentlemen drivers and a professional against cars with three professionals, um, in, in you know, most of them, you know, we're going to be realistic that it's going to be a tough ask on pure pace. But you know, we're just going to we just got to be sensible and um, you know, try to do a good, nice, clean race. And um, you know, 24 hours is a long time, and it's not going to be well on the first corner or the first lap. So um, we'll um, have to attack this one a different way and um, you know, gain, you know, the, the other thing is to gain the experience for the team and, um, you know, and for us, you know, it's my first um, time at Le Mans and, um, you know, we're just going to um, have our feet on the ground, go and work sensibly and, you know, just do the best job we can. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, mean, I think beyond the French support, um, it's wonderful that they uh, have in, included you in, in sort of their, um, their local car. Um, I'm sure that you're going to garner plenty of support, both from uh, the West Country, Howard's Group's homeland, um, and across, across the UK. Um, at Sports Car Global, we offer you you know, all the best and all the support that we can bring. Um, and if goodwill counts for anything, then um, we expect to see you under the chequered flag. And um, let's not worry too much about the position. I think the getting there will be um, most of the fun. Yeah, no, exactly. It's, um, you know, just to finish a 24-hour race is a great result in itself. So, um, you know, naturally, um, we're going to do the best we can. And, um, um, you know, see what result we can do. But um, uh, you've got to be realistic when you're up against them field of professionals and um, you know with the changes that have been made it's um late to do it but um you know we're going to go down you know with our head down and um, have a good go at it so um you know we're, we're looking forward to it and uh you know it's, it's great to have um, support
from you know the people that have um, you know both local and um, you know from my locality supporting it. So um, yeah, it's been a really good, good fun week. But um, you know, looking forward to sharing with everybody. Great. Um, thank you for your time again this morning, and um, I hope the flight delay doesn't last too long. Take care, yeah. mate. Cheers. Thanks.